Hi chicos, how are you? Today we're gonna start the drawing of the teapot. So we are gonna start making a central axis as usual because the teapot is a symmetrical body so we need to keep the center in place. And then we are gonna draw the uh, horizontal axis, the one that is touching the floor. So be sure that this is straight. I just realized mine is a little bit tilted, so I'm making the correction. All right. Then you need to decide how open this is going to be. And it's going to be symmetrical. So be sure that you have the same distance in each side of the central axis. Then by observation, you have to be sure that you need to pay attention to how open these ellipses look by looking at your models. So if you decide that this ellipse looks this open, then you put the same distance in the other side of the horizontal axis, and then you draw the corners. Remember that we always want to do the corners first because that makes, give you beautiful, beautiful ellipses. I won't care about that to finish completing that ellipses because we won't be seeing this area. Now we are gonna be drawing an ellipsis every time there is a change of direction in a uh, in an object. Then I'm going to draw the widest part of my teapot and I realize that is the total width of my base is is the height of that the widest part of my pot. This being the bottom part this being the midpoint, and then the other side. Okay, so, again, I'm gonna repeat. After sighting, I realized that the width and the height of my widest part of the pot is the same. I'm gonna check again, all right. Okay, but I also observe that this is going to be the bottom part of my lips, is not the center, so right. That's why I draw the this axis there. Now, to decide how how open or the width of that ellipsis is, I raise this line, and by observation, I decide how much open it looks. by sighting, just sight as your model. Maybe a little bit more open, like this. All right, having this distance, you put the same distance in your inside. I just don't know if you notice that I always make points. Points are actually very important because they give you, you don't get lost in your drawing. Okay, so I have here my beautiful curve. I won't care about that one because I won't be seeing it in my drawing. So I have the widest part of my pot, base or the foot of my pot, then I'm gonna draw the bottom part of the body of my pot, which is going to be about here. All right, remember that uh, as lower or farther from the vanishing of the horizon line an ellipsis is, wider it gonna, it's gonna look. Meaning if this is going to be the widest ellipsis, then this one, the next one is gonna be slightly thinner. Let me 
Okay, so I'm gonna draw it like that. I make this curve, that curve, this curve, and then I'm ready to connect. I won't care about drawing that one here at the top. Sorry, the back part. And I connect these two ellipses and I have my the foot of my pot. And this is the body. Now I'm connecting. I, uh, I have to observe how this connects with and I have, I'm afraid that I'm afraid I draw that one too high. But I want to leave it there to avoid confusions. All right, then I'm gonna draw now the top, the lid, right? So I need to decide where the lid is. The width of my lid, which I think is about there put the same distance to each side. Do need to decide also how open it looks. Make the curves and connect. Right. In this occasion, yes, I'm gonna complete the ellipses. And then I start connecting. I start connecting. There I have my body. Now the lead. This is the body, right? Sorry, the hole of my pot. To draw the lead, so I'm gonna raise from this point. I'm gonna raise the lead. I'm connecting this to the to that point. Do you see? So that I get a beautiful lead fitting the mouth of my, of the body of my pot. There it is. Now I need to draw the knob. The knob is about here, it's another ellipsis. So you need to design how open it looks by looking at your model. How, how much do you see of the surface of the knob? Okay. Once you have that ellipsis, we are gonna mirror this curve to make it double uh, looks cool and then we're going to draw here another ellipsis smaller right and then we are going to connect these two parts and there it is you have the knob beautiful now we're going to start drawing the spout to draw the spout we need to pay special attention where Along this line, the spout meets the body, and I think it's below this point. It's about here. Another important data is you need to observe the negative shape here in between, and you need to observe also the height where, by sighting, um, by sighting, I realize that this point and the spout are aligned. Okay, so I know it should not be higher than that point. I, or I also sighting and looking at this, uh, the direction of the spot, it has that direction. And then I need to pay attention to this negative shape, all right? So I have the height, I have the, the direction. I'm paying attention to the negative shape and I think it looks something like this, all right? Having this, then I need to pay attention again to where the spout meets the body. And it's about here. Beautiful. It's look like a... Okay. Now that I'm completing the drawing, I realize that my pot is a little bit farther here. So I make just the adjustment, no problem with that. But of course, if I do this adjustment, I may need to do the adjustment in the other side too. Okay. 
Okay, so if becomes a little bit confusing, that's why it's important to have this central axis. So you just measure this distance, for example, at any point, and you make a dot there. You know that you need to meet the distance in that area. I'm gonna trace another line here. Measure this distance and be sure that I have it in the other side too. Okay, very easy, right? Now I measure this distance here and I put it in the other side. And now I have all these dots to connect. And it should be symmetrical, similar to the other side. That's how I replicate the body. It's looking cool, right? Now I am just refining this beautiful curve here, right? Uh, see? And here I may suggest this little um, ellipses here, not too open because I don't see much of that. I am just observing how this meets the body. Uh, and I observe that this is round. So I'm rounding these edges, the connection. Cool. So negative shapes are very, very important. This beautiful shape here is a negative shape, so you, you need to keep an eye on that. All right. Notice that my construction lines were very soft. If I am retracing some of the lines are those lines that I'm sure that they are in the correct place now. Okay, now I'm ready for the spot. Uh, sorry, for the handle. Now I need to see where along this line the handle meets the body. And I think it's here, right? So I'm also noticing that it goes up a little bit and then it goes that direction noticing notice that i am drawing straight lines to be able to see the direction of my of the lines and then i can work on making it then curve all right here i have one two three four five different directions now i can I'm going to pay attention to the negative shape here. Very cool. And then I need to observe how this meets the body and it makes a beautiful curve here connecting. This connection here is it's not curved. It's a straight making a beautiful contrast between this curved line and this angle line. Same here. This is curved and this is straight. Right, beautiful. Okay, corazón, as do you see, this negative shape is important. Now, now I am, I need to observe how, how to connect this. This is the side of the handle. This is the side. This is the side. Right. All this is the side of the handle. And at the top, I see a little bit of of the surface because it's below the it's below the horizon line that's why all right something like this that's beautiful there it is so i'm ready to draw sorry i'm ready to paint now now that i have the drawing i'm ready to paint and before painting of course it's important to start observing making observations uh, for example, I'm making an observation here that let's call this value mapping. 
if the light is coming from the top, this is going to be light lighter than this all this area, right? If the light is hitting all this area, the top of the body, when it changes the direction, there is a change of direction. Do you see here? And then it goes down. So here should be should be slightly darker. So if we remember the exercise of the egg, we are going to put in practice all the theory that we learned about having a light source, a core shade. My core shade is going to be here. Remember that the teapot is a round object. My subject has two light sources. The main light source is coming from this point, and it's a, it's a warm light. So all these colors are going to be warmer than that side here. The light from the window is hitting the uh, teapot, so it's going to look cooler, right? And less bright than my warm light. All right, so here there's a change of direction, so I should be able to see also the difference then. Then here there is a change of direction. It looks it looks um, darker there. Okay, so what I'm doing this moment is just mapping the light, is understanding where the lights and shades are going to be. It could, it can be more specific, but I think this is enough for me to uh, start. So see you next time.